I would go as far as to say that the Callisto Protocol, an action-packed horror survival game created by the minds behind the critically acclaimed Dead Space, is a modern marvel and a testament to the veteran developer's love for the genre. But it isn't without its faults, and there are quite a few from my perspective. I bought the game day one on PC and have experienced all the ups and downs of the game's bugs and its patches. I also finished the game on normal difficulty a few nights ago, and after letting it sit, I'm ready to add my two cents. If you're new to the channel, welcome! I'll be going over pros and cons from the visuals, gameplay, sound design, and story. So, without further ado, let's jump into it! Starting with the most apparent of the game's features, the visual design is truly worthy of being deemed next-gen, with highly detailed character and weapon models, along with a series of dark, claustrophobic, and uncanny valley-esque levels. In regards to special effects and settings, there are many options to tweak to your liking. For example, the motion blur in Callisto is very high quality if you choose to use it. And if you have an AMD graphics card, there are further quality settings slash boosts that you could apply. I, however, was not able to do so since I own a GTX graphics card. Upon release on PC, Callisto had intense issues with frame stuttering, and even now after many performance patches from the developers, it still does. I usually play with relatively balanced settings, preferring performance over ultra high quality and such, but even with my settings at the lowest, my game would drop from around 60 frames to 40, which is not only very jarring and visually unappealing, but it makes reacting to the gameplay itself much more difficult. The camera angle is kept close to your character in order to maintain that tight, anxious feeling but in some instances, it works against you. It's specifically in combat, with multiple enemies in closed off hallways. The gore on enemies is raw and visceral, very reminiscent of Dead Space's dismemberment, and is one of the coolest things to look at. I did notice that characters' facial emotions don't always shine through due to the models having what I call dead fish eyes, and sometimes lacking certain effects. In later emotional scenes, it's hard to empathize with a character who's sad and crying because there aren't any tears rolling down their face and their eyebrows don't knit together. I would give the visuals a solid 7.8 out of 10. Very good, but with a few issues that detract from the experience. The meat of this game is quite literally the combat. Unfortunately, the survival aspect of this horror game fades into the background, as on lower difficulties it seems you're excessively given ammunition for the many weapons and equipment that you have at any moment. But starting the game off, you are limited to mostly melee combat, and in most situations, you'll be relying on your melee weapons to assist you in fights against the Necrophage. There is a dodging system that has come to be quite the 50-50 among players. While it is interesting and a unique method of immersing yourself in up-close and personal encounters, it has a tendency to become quite repetitive and may not work as intended in certain moments. To avoid any spoilers, I won't show any footage or disclose information about the bosses, but I will say that the dodging mechanic is hyper-focused in those fights to a fault. It felt like I was stuck in one spot, only able to shoot once or twice before having to dodge attacks. This happens with most of the bosses, unfortunately, which makes them uninteresting and more of a nuisance than a spectacle. Just constantly dodging with very little room for any other action is not the most enjoyable form of combat in my opinion. In other regards though, I do enjoy pulling off dodges with gun and melee combos on groups of enemies. In those instances, it reminds me a bit of a fighting game. There are suggestions for stealth, but more often than not, I've found it to not be properly balanced. Sometimes it'll be too easy, others almost impossible. It's more of an inclusion than a feature. There's an awfully abundant amount of vents and tight passages to crawl through, which gets to be a bit annoying if you need to backtrack for an objective. I'm gonna give gameplay another 7.8. It's enjoyable and it scratches that suspenseful horror itch, but there are a few unrefined mechanics. Crunches, splatters, gunshots, and thwacks, every bit of physical content has incredible detail. Where would games be without the time and effort to recreate realistic sounds and effects for characters and environments? Callisto doesn't pull any punches when it comes to sound design. The ambience of the game's many levels send chills down your spine with eerie orchestral instruments and shocking stingers. 
During the beginning of the game, I was caught off guard multiple times by the music's pacing and climax. However, there were moments later in the game where I found the score to be a bit repetitive, specifically in cutscenes including your main character. There will be 9 times out of 10 a stinger sound, which lessened the effectiveness of the trope. For the remainder of the game, I grew accustomed to it and it lost its shock factor. Weaponry, character, and environment sounds such as melee attacks, vaulting, footsteps, and your character heavily breathing take the cake, as the audio behind it is very high quality. It's always satisfying to hear the squidging on guts as you stomp a necrophage for loot, and the digital ping as you pick up a health pack from it. The music in Callisto does strike me as more of your generic horror score, but it still does the job of inducing fear and anxiety, albeit at the cost of sounding unique. Voice acting is done by some top-notch actors from some of your favorite shows and games including The Boys and Call of Duty World War II, and is packed with realistic tonality, inflections, and emotions. For sound design, I'm gonna go ahead and give it an 8.2. Besides my nitpick about stingers and the actual music, everything else is fantastic. Saving the most important for last, story obviously serves the most vital role in Callisto's foundation, and there's a lot to unpack. As mentioned before, I won't be spoiling anything in case any of you guys would like to play the game yourselves, but I will give a gist. You play as Jacob Lee, a run-of-the-mill space trucker making deliveries with his buddy. One day you get an order for a shipment from a prison. It's our last run, Max. I'm done talking about it. And what do you want me to say? Well, thank you. Because after this job, we're never going to have to work another day in our lives. All seems fine and dandy until you're boarded by a space terrorist organization, supposedly looking for said cargo. We got trouble. What's up? We've been boarded. Oh shit. The other way? Yeah, I'm guessing. Oh, wait. Shit. Search the hold. It's gotta be here somewhere. Things go awry, and you find yourself crash landed on Callisto, the moon of Jupiter. You wake up to the prison's captain of security rescuing you. But the captain receives a call and decides to imprison you instead. Events unfold from there on. Now, after playing through the game, I will say that for the majority of it, I was pretty confused as to what was going on. There are many audio and text logs around the various levels to help clue you in, but they weren't a great deal of help. Another qualm I have with those logs is that as opposed to Dead Space for example, they do not play automatically or on the go. So you would need to pick them up, head to the menu, select and wait for the audio to play, effectively halting the pacing of the game. Towards the end, with most of your time wandering around the game just doing things people tell you to do, you get an exposition dump, which personally I dislike as I feel it's a cheap way to explain the story without the buildup. The story in total leaned more towards the generic, although it did have a few cool moments. So for the story, I think I'm going to be giving it a 6.9 out of 10. While it is an enjoyable game, it treads a lot of ground that's already been covered. I think I'm going to give Callisto a 7 out of 10. It feels like a modern ode to Dead Space, but with a few more and a few less unique properties, if that makes any sense. I hope you enjoyed my review. If there's anything I left out, please feel free to yell at me in the comments. And if you did, in fact, enjoy the video, then I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit like and subscribe with the bell on for notifications. The next game I'll be reviewing is Dead Space Remake. I just beat it today and it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited to get that video out to you guys as soon as possible. Love you guys, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Deuces.